Okay, welcome. This is a short video about the life cycle of stars. Now, it all starts from this thing. This is a cloud of dust, uh, gas and dust. This is what we call a nebula. Okay, now, the cloud of gas and dust in outer space, gravity makes it spin and makes it contract. And what happens in the centre there is all of the particles start to rub together due to friction and you get heat and pressure and high heat and pressure is the situation you need for fusion and once fusion has started the center of that nebula we call it a protostar okay it's what's there before uh, the real star if you like is formed it's got nuclear fusion started and the rest of the nebula continues to spin and forms these like discs which will eventually become the planets and once uh, fusion's got going in a larger area, this is the main part of the star's life cycle. So we call it, this part is called its main sequence. Now the length of the main sequence depends upon the mass. The larger, more massive stars, they have shorter main sequences and smaller stars have longer main sequence. Our star is quite small, so it, it has a longer main sequence. You've got to remember here, at this point, there's a balance of forces going on. There is a Newton's first law pair. So the outwards force due to friction, uh, sorry, due to fusion is balanced by an inwards force of gravity. So fusion and gravity are balanced. And as they're balanced, there's no acceleration. So the star stays in this like ball shape. Um, and also you need to remember that this is when, during fusion, new elements are being made and in fact all the elements that are less heavy than iron are made during this section here okay now again we have a choice if it's got less mass then these three things are going to happen to the star this is what will eventually happen to our star it will cool once fusion slows down it will cool down and it will turn a more red color and we call that a red giant, a red giant star. It swells up and it will swell up to about the size out to the orbit of Jupiter, so it would be really large and it would be cooler. And eventually uh, all the fusion stops and gravity is not enough to bring it together and the, the elements that have been made in that star just drift out into space. And what will be left over is a small dense object called a white dwarf okay white dwarf still a little bit of fusion going on still a little bit of heat coming out still a bit of light it looks white in the night sky and eventually all that fusion stops and you get yeah you guessed it a black dwarf so smaller than the original star uh, dwarf and no light coming out of it so black now if we rewind and go back to here what happens next if we have a more massive star, more mass, well, it still uh, turns red, looks uh, is cooler, and gets larger, but this time it gets much larger, so we call it a red super giant star. And the red super giant um, can suddenly collapse in on itself, it suddenly collapses in on itself, and all of the material bounces off an incredibly dense core and that is a, a colossal explosion that we can observe. We sit here on Earth and we observe them in outer space and we call that explosion a supernova. You might have heard of that word before but not necessarily known what it is. A supernova is a colossal explosion of a star in outer space and it's in this situation when you've got a whole lot more energy that fusion takes place but it's fusion that requires more energy than it gives out and you get elements made which are larger than iron it's a really important thing to understand so everything on earth is was made in a star if it's less than iron during, during its main sequence if it's more than iron higher in the uh, period table than iron then it's, um, it was made during a supernova and again then there's uh, two options if it's got less mass it can turn into this thing here. It's called a neutron star. Okay, a neutron star. 
has uh, is an incredibly dense ball of neutrons. Okay, and if it's got more mass than most mass, enough mass for this, then you'll be left with what's called a black hole. We don't really understand exactly what a black hole is, but we do know it's an incredibly dense object in space. We know there's one at the centre of our galaxy, uh, and one at the centre of most galaxies. We say at the same time it is, an, it is a perfect absorber, absorber of electromagnetic radiation and a perfect emitter of electromagnetic radiation. So the gravity is so great around that that it absorbs all the light, basically, but at the same time. It emits all of light. So to say it's black, really, in the night sky, I draw it black, but really, we, it, it doesn't really have a colour. Okay, so I hope that's helped. Thank you very much for listening.